because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history, in recent American history. What's your take on how responsible government spending was in helping contribute to the problem that we're facing now on this front? Inflation is a matter of demand and supply, and the spending that was undertaken um, in the American Rescue Plan did um, feed demand. Here we go. Don't jump. <laughs> She's our photographer. Look at her up there. She was in a three meter. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Don't jump. You guys are used to jumping. Don't jump. Anyway, thanks for letting me come and say hello to you all. It's a MAGA agenda, all right. Let me tell you about this ultra MAGA agenda. It's extreme, as most MAGA things are. It will actually raise taxes on 75 million American families, over 95 percent of whom make less than $100,000 a year. Budget request for the Department of Energy. Thank you, Senator Granholm, for joining us today. I'm particularly pleased to see you. Why is it important? Because bringing down the deficit is one way to ease inflationary pressures in an economy where a consequence of a war and gas prices and oil and food and it all, it's, it's a different world right this moment because of Ukraine and Russia. We can do these things by making sure that no one earning less than $400,000 a year will pay a single penny more in federal taxes. Before Russia attacked, we made sure Russia had javelins and other weapons to strengthen the defenses so Ukraine was ready for whatever happened. The Federal Reserve is expected to raise short-term interest rates this afternoon to fight the highest inflation in 40 years. You've all felt it. A recent CBS News poll found that 66% of Americans say inflation is difficult or it's a hardship. The chief investment strategist at Bank of America warned just last month that the inflation shock is worsening, the rate shock is just beginning, and a recession could be coming. Oh, no. The election in this November is going to be a referendum on privacy and your rights to freedom as an American. They don't want to make that the case. They want it to be, oh, it's inflation. It's something at the border. We're actually going to do 100 rules this year alone on appliances, just like you asked. We are developing partnerships on how we work together for new building standards, even for sustainable airlines. Who the funk? that they'd be all in, but they better be or they're going to be out of here, right? Do you know Hunter Biden? I've met him. Uh, have you ever had an opportunity or your staff had an opportunity to discuss energy policy with Hunter Biden, given his experience in this space? No. Do you think it was appropriate for Vice President Biden to conduct foreign policy in the Ukraine while an influential Ukrainian energy company called Burisma was paying his son a million dollars a year to serve on his board, or while a Russian billionaire was providing millions of dollars to Hunter Biden uh, at the same time that Hunter Biden was apparently paying his father's business exp or living expenses. With respect, sir, I'm here on the Department of Energy's budget. I'm not sure what, what relevance that has to the budget. And I also know that President Biden is an incredibly ethical human being and would never do anything that would demonstrate a conflict of interest. Well, as a member of his cabinet and somebody who obviously takes conflicts of interest very seriously, I wanted to see what your opinion was. I, I've got another couple of items to, to ask you about. Hunter Biden rode on Air Force Two to China to conduct business deals with CCP-aligned figures at the same time that his father was meeting with and conducting foreign policy there with China. Does that seem right to you? Would you have allowed that if you were vice president? Sir, I'm not here to opine on something that might have happened in the previous administration. I'm here to talk about the Department of Energy budget. Well, in this administration, in 2021, while his father was president, Hunter Biden still owned an interest in BHR Partners. He owned that in partnership with Chinese Communist Party entities. And right after his dad, President Biden met with Xi Jinping. It was announced by Hunter Biden's lawyer that he'd divested his interest in that entity. Yet no one's given the details about when he divested it, how much profit he made. Do you think that's appropriate? Sir, I have no information about any of the things that you're talking about. Well, let's just go through the basic facts, because I think you do appreciate the importance of ethics in government, the importance of avoiding the appearance of conflicts of interest. But we have 
emails and photographs. I want to ask about the ice bed cut because I think this is important. You've mentioned you don't have the resources to really detain hold people. We know that we have appropriated last year 34,000 beds, but because of COVID, you only have those 75% occupied, which is sort of ironic in that Title 42 is going away under a COVID national emergency, yet the, the ability to use all of your detention beds is stymied because of the COVID uh, requirements by CDC. So that doesn't jive at all. On the one hand, say you don't have the resources, and on the other hand, come in with a budget that asks for funding for 9,000 fewer beds. Ranking Member Capito, uh, first of all, we are um, uh, awaiting new CDC guidelines with respect to our use of, of detention space, number one. And number two, I have to take a step back, because when we talk about, uh, when we look at the challenge of the border, uh, which has been an enduring challenge, um, uh, certainly since the Department of Homeland Security uh, was created. Um, whether it's 24,000 beds, 25,000 beds, 31,000 beds, that's not going to address the challenge at the border. Given, given that the conservative court majority is likely to be around for a while, do Democrats need to look more seriously at court expansion? Look, the bottom line is our first step is to have the vote that we're going to have next week. And um, the bottom line is that uh, we're going to look to these elections in November, and I think it's going to the American people are going to speak loudly and clearly that we need some change. And just a few days ago, the Wall Street Journal quoted a young Hungarian fighter saying, and I quote, without the javelins, it would have been very hard to stop the enemy pushing ahead, end of quote. So these weapons...